In this video, we'll be building out this design in code. Now, this is a crypto price tracker very similar to what you could find on Coinbase. It's a simple list that goes and get data from an API and then populates this list and then also populates this chart down below. So for this video, we'll be using React Native, the CoinGecko API. We'll be using a bottom sheet library to get this nice bottom sheet to come up. And we're also going to be using Axios for API calls. So if you're new here, my name is Matt. Welcome to the channel. On this channel, we take designs that we create through Figma and create them in code with React Native. So in this first part, we'll be building out some reusable components. Um, and in the later videos, we'll be building out the bottom sheet and then connecting everything to the API. So if you haven't yet, subscribe for more content like this and let's jump into it. So as usual, we'll be starting from scratch. So right now I've got VS Code open with an empty project and an empty terminal. And let's go ahead and create the project. So expo init crypto price tracker. Hit enter. And then we'll go ahead and select the first option here, blank. Once that's done, we can copy the command they have written out for us here to jump into the correct directory. And from there, we could say yarn start, or since we're using Expo, we could just go ahead and say Expo start. So just before jumping into the actual code, kind of the environment we have going here. Um, so here are all our files. Um, App.js is where we'll be getting started uh, with the code. And if you've run Expo, you'll see this QR code that will open up. So you could scan this with your phone and if you have the Expo Go app installed on your phone, you'll be able to run the app on your phone, which is really fun while you're building. Um, since I wanna show you guys what I'll be using, I'm just gonna open it on iOS in the iOS simulator for this video. So once we've got our app up and running, we could go ahead and check out our design to see what we should get started with. Now, if you've started this series at this video and you haven't checked out the actual Figma design video where we design it together, that's not a problem. Check the description or the link in the description below uh, for the Figma file, which is this one right here, um, so that you have all the exact values that we'll be using. So let's go ahead and start with this title, then we'll work on this divider and then this list item um, in this video. So for the title, we know that we want it to be bold and size 24 um, and a black fill. So let's jump back into our code and right away we could get started by saying text, markets, and in here we'll give it a style. So we'll call this styles dot large title. And just under here, we could say large title. And we'll say font size is going to be 24. And then font weight will be bold. So you could either say bold or you could say 700. Um, so we'll stick with bold for now. So let's save that. There we go, already starting to look good. Um, and now for this container, we can remove certain values. So these ones here, let's remove that. Um, and now it's gonna go to the top, perfect. We'll also move this markets title um, slightly lower. So what we could do is let's go ahead and wrap it um, in a view. And over here, we'll say style styles dot title wrapper and this title wrapper all it's going to have will be some margin on the top so margin top of let's say something like 80 and we're also going to want to give it a horizontal margin or for this one we could actually use padding and we'll say 16. Now that's gonna place it exactly where we want. Next, we could add in this horizontal line that we have right over here. So let's go ahead and add that in. So that's gonna be wrapped in its own 
view and actually that will be its own view um, and it could be self-closing since there's nothing actually inside it's just a line so we could say styles dot divider and let's copy that style bring it to the bottom and in here we could say height is going to be style sheet dot hairline width and basically that just makes it really really thin um, kind of like what we want over here and then we'll want to set it to the color gray that we have so let's go ahead just copy that color so color or sorry background color is going to be that gray and you could find this color in the figma file under the assets it'll be right over here now when saving it we see that it's a line that goes all the way across so let's add some margin so margin horizontal of 16 that way it just gets trimmed on the sides there um, and now we could also set a margin top of something around 16 i believe 16 and then uh, 24 but from the bottom but we'll do that one in the list so we'll just set margin top to 16 save that and there we go so we're ready to move on to the list item right over here for this list item let's jump back to our code let's create a new folder called components and in here a new file called list item dot js now in here I have a plugin installed which lets me create um, boilerplate code really quickly. If you look look up React Native, it should be the first extension um, in the VS Code extension library. So we've got our component here. Let's just call it list item for now. Save it and just make sure that it worked. So in app.js, let's go import our list item from components list item and we can put it in here so list item just like that and we should see it show up awesome so jumping back into list item we'll want to wrap everything in a touchable opacity since we'll want to be able to click these so that the bottom sheet could come up so let's do that now so touchable opacity awesome and in here let's start building out the view that we'll need. So let's go view. And this one's going to have a style of styles dot um, item wrapper. And just so it doesn't keep bugging us about styles, let's go ahead and create the style sheet down here. Sorry, const styles is equal to style sheet dot create just like that and make sure that we have it imported style sheet awesome so we have our view this is going to hold all the items in here um, now we'll also want to separate this into two separate views so we'll have the left side here which is going to be one view and then the right side here which is going to be another view um, and then we can use flexbox to kind of space them out so let's create the left side first and maybe we'll add a comment over here, left side. And this one will be the right side. So the left side will have a style, styles.left wrapper. And in here, we'll have an image. Now make sure that you import the image, otherwise you will get an error. So import it from React Native. So the image over here will have a source and we'll say source is URI. And for now, since we want to use some sample data, um, let's just go ahead and find a picture online of the Ethereum uh, logo, copy the link and paste it in here. Awesome. Now let's give this a style as well because we're gonna have to set the width and height of it. So we'll call it styles.image. Cool. Now for the next part, let's jump back to the design. We'll work on these two titles. So we could put those in their own view. So that's gonna be view with style, 
styles.titles wrapper. And in here we'll have two text items. So the first one is going to be the name of the coin. So in this case, Ethereum. And the second one is going to be the abbreviation. So ETH. And let's add some styles for these as well. Styles.title. And then this one's going to be style styles dot subtitle. Cool. Now let's go ahead and get the code written out for the right side as well. And then we'll work on styling everything all together uh, once that's done. So for this one, let's add a style for the right side. So right wrapper, hit enter. And in here, if we go check it out, it's going to be even more simple where it's just going to be two titles. Um, so we can even just copy this and we should be good. The only thing that's going to be changing is the color of this title. Um, so maybe what we could do right away is make this an array and set the color of this text to red for now as a placeholder. So let's go ahead and copy all these styles. I'll close my console. Let's copy all these styles and paste them in here. So right now what I'm doing is I'm clicking one of them, holding down the option key on my Mac and clicking the others. And in doing so, so these are duplicates. Let me restart that. In doing so, I'm able to copy all of them at once and paste them in here. Now I'm doing the same thing, holding down the option key and adding all the brackets. So here we're getting an error, can find variable, touchable opacity. So all we need to do is import that from React Native. And let's get started with the styling. So the first one is actually going to be the item wrapper. Forgot to copy that one. So item wrapper, awesome. Let's check out our design. What are we going to need for that? So first thing, we know that we want it to have some padding on the left and right. So let's do that. Padding horizontal is going to be 16. And then we also know that from the top, we want it to have a margin of 24. So let's add that in as well. Margin top is going to be 24. Now, if we save that, there we go. We already see it um, starting to improve a little bit. Now we also want to set the flex direction to row. And that's what's going to make it kind of all line up in a row like that. We'll justify the content as space between. And we'll align all the items center like that. Awesome. Now for the left wrapper, let's actually start with the image styling. So let me go copy that one, styles.image. That way we could see it render. Now, the reason why we can't see it right now is because we haven't set a height and width property. So we'll set the height and width to the same thing. And let's go double check our item over here. So 48. So I could do those at the same time by holding down the option key, click save, and there we go. Now we see our item. So in the left wrapper, we want it to align in a row. So we could say flex direction is going to be row that's going to line them up and we could say align items to be center that way they get centered like that awesome now moving on to the titles wrapper so the titles wrapper that's this over here we know that we want it to be eight pixels of left margin so margin left is going to be eight and I believe that is it for this one. So we could jump into the title. So the title is going to be font size of 18. Font size 18. And the subtitle is going to be font size of 14. And also as a default, we'll want this gray color. 
So let's just check out what the hex value is. Copy that over. So that's going to be color like that. So we could see here that the titles are pretty close together. So on the subtitle, let's add some margin top and let's add four pixels. That way it just gets spaced out a little bit. So now moving on to the right wrapper. So that's this section over here. We'll set the align items to flex end, and that's gonna push them all to the right. Um, and once we've done that, we've got a touchable opacity wrapping our um, list item, and we've got it set up with some sample data over here. So one thing we could do right now is we know that later on in the app, we'll be wanting to populate all this information with data from the API um, that we get all the coin data from. So what we could do is we could replace all these hard-coded strings with props that we pass in the component right over here. And later on, when we integrate this with the API, it's going to be really smooth to make it all fit together. So we could say name in here, which is going to be the name of the coin, the symbol, or the uh, abbreviation the current price. We'll also want the price change percentage over seven days, and we'll want the logo URL. So let's go ahead and change all of these to their props. So this one here is going to change to logo URL. This is going to change to name. Down here, we'll have symbol. Instead of Ethereum here, this is going to be the current price. And this one's going to be the price change percentage over seven days. Now, if we save this, we won't see anything. Um, and that's just because we haven't passed anything into the list item. So let's get some sample data in here. That way we could test out our component and test out a list of these components without actually connecting the API. So in the assets folder in here, let's create a new folder called data. And in here, create a new file called sample data.js. Now, if you check the GitHub repo that's linked in the description below and you go into this file, you can go ahead and copy that entire file and paste it in here um, rather than retyping it since it's a lot of stuff. Once you've pasted it in, you'll have this really big file with all the data. And basically this has information about the symbol, name, image, the current price. Um, it also has a spark line for seven days. And this is what we'll be using to build out the chart. Um, and then lastly, the price change percentage for seven days. So jumping back to app.js, now we could import that data. So import from, and that's going to be assets data and sample data. And we'll go ahead and import sample data. Now what we could do is in here, we could say list item. So we know that we want to pass in the name. So you could say name is going to be equal to sample data at index zero dot name. We know that we'd like to pass in the symbol. So that's also going to be sample data index zero dot symbol. And we'll just do the same thing for the rest of them. So I'm just going to speed this up. Once we've completed that, we could see that on the right here, we have all our data, but we could see that it's not really formatted the way we want it to be. So let's jump back into our list item. And the first thing that we'll notice is that the symbol down here is lowercase. So what we could add is symbol dot two upper case. And if we save that, that's just automatically going to put it um, to uppercase. The next thing, there's no dollar sign here. So let's go ahead and add that. So in here, um, we could go ahead and put a dollar sign in front. And we could also format it the way we want by saying current price dot two 
locale string. And here we could say US, since this is in US dollar. And then currency will be USD. And saving that, we see that it adds in a nice little comma. The last thing we'll want to do is change this color depending on if this is positive or negative. So up here, even before the return statement, we'll say const price change color is going to be equal to price change percentage seven day is greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero, then we'll want it to be green. Otherwise, we'll want it to be red. And for these green and red, we could go ahead and make sure that we're using the right colors from our assets. So let's just check what that is. Copy the hex value, paste it in, and same thing for the red. Now I'm just going to fix this typo const. And instead of placing color red in here, we'll say price change color. Awesome. The last improvement we can make here is to shorten this number. So to do that, we could say dot two fixed two, and that's going to set it to two decimal points. And we could just add a whoops, small percentage at the end of it. That way we get the percent sign. Awesome. So the last part of this video will be to render a list of these list items. So to do, to do that, we can use a flat list. So let's go ahead and create one. So here we'll have a flat list. Now we just need to make sure to import it up here. So this will take a key extractor and that basically just sets the key for each item, so item, item dot ID. We'll set the data as the sample data. And for the render item, we're going to have the item which will render a list item. Now we can copy everything that we have in here. And instead of putting zero and even putting this sample data, we could remove that and just say item. So it's gonna be item.name, item.symbol, and so on. So we can delete this Bitcoin item that we are testing it with. And there we go, now we have our flat list. Now you might notice that it's kind of getting stuck in here underneath. Um, sometimes that could be nice. If that's not what you're going for, then we could kind of uh, play around with it to make it work properly. So what we'll do is we'll create a new component up here called um, list header. And all this is going to do is render what we have over here. So delete that, paste it in, and in here under the render item, we'll say list header component. And this component is just going to be the list header from above. So let's save that. And let's just go add an empty fragment in here to wrap everything properly. So save that. Let's tab this in. Cool. And there you have it. Now it scrolls properly. So you might be asking yourself, how could we avoid the text getting stuck behind the status bar? Um, and to do that, it's actually pretty simple. So let's just import the safe area view from React Native. Let's replace this view with a safe area view. And same thing for the one at the bottom. And now we could save that. And if you scroll up, you'll see that it doesn't get stuck under. And the only thing we'll want to adjust now is the top margin. So instead of 80, maybe we could reduce it to 40 um, or even lower to 20. 
And there we go. Now when we scroll up, it's going to scroll perfectly. And same thing for the bottom. So that is it for part one of this series. I hope you enjoyed that. Just to recap what we learned, we learned how to create reusable components that we could then use in a flat list. Um, we also learned some small specifics, for example, how to get the items above the flat list to scroll with it, and also how to use the safe area view in some scrollable uh, views. So if you did like this, let me know down below. Let me know any feedback, uh, questions, or comments, and I'd be happy to answer them. Um, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe, hit that bell, and stay tuned for the next video where we'll be starting to build out this bottom sheet component with the chart.